Hey everyone, Merc here. Uh, welcome to my 300 subscriber special, my second Q&A video. I'm going to get to the actual questions in a minute, but first I want to take a moment to say this. 300 subscribers, that's that's incredible. I didn't, I didn't think I'd get to this milestone. Certainly not this early in my YouTube career, big air quotes, um, by the way, to sp so to speak. Um, I'm inconsistent in both my content and my release schedule. I have never actually heard of a release schedule. And um, anyone who can demonstrate otherwise is a liar and not to be trusted. Um, you know, back when I started this channel, like I dropped, like, I think it was like one video a week for like the first, um, or no, 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 it was one video a day for like the first week. And then after that, like, it just dropped off the consistency until, like, I'm putting out a video every month, maybe, at best. Or a video every three months, actually, is probably closer. Um, honestly, it's a miracle that I got 300 with that level of inconsistency in my uploads. Really, just just thank you all. I do this, I do this for fun. But you all inspire me to do it more, if that makes sense, you know? Um, if I didn't have 300 subscribers, I would still I would still be making content just because I like to make uh, mashups um, and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I probably wouldn't be putting in as much effort um, to improve. No, well, actually, yeah, yeah. You motivate me to put stuff out really I guess is where I'm going with this you know otherwise I have no reason really to upload as frequently wow frequently I don't I don't upload frequently but um, yeah however infrequently I upload um, that's that's all you guys that's that I do it for you so thank you um, with all that said, now that I've rambled on for um, two and a half minutes, uh, let's get to the actual questions read by my lovely assistant today, the Google Translate English voice lady. Who's up first to bat, uh, Google Translate lady? What kind of storytelling speaks to you? Do you like your expectations subverted, or do you want direct satisfaction? Are you pissed off in a story where the hero saves the world, but no one will ever know what he did? I know I am. So, um, for the first part of your question, it, Zach, it, uh, it depends, um, on the type of story, like, um, how, I, I guess basically how used the premise is, um, there's, um, there's a saying that, um, there are no more original stories like every story on, or every every possible plot set up on earth um has already been tried you know you don't see um original like truly original concepts anymore um but uh there are some that are more overplayed and um with those i tend to um prefer um in most cases to have my expectations subverted. Not always, though. Not always. There's some works that I um, that I go into um, just uh, you know without that in mind. You know, sometimes I just want to turn my brain off and have a good time. Um, as for the second part of your question, um, this one, not really. I um. You know, there's uh, stories where um, where they uh, don't, where the hero doesn't get recognition for saving the world, and that's okay because it's not that's not the point of the story, you know. And um, typically, uh, a hero won't really um, care too much about their recognition. I know it's treated as like a bittersweet thing when. Um, when they save the world, but nobody knows what they did. Um, but honestly, I don't have a problem with it. Um, you know, 
it adds another layer of, uh, of depth to the ending, I feel. Um, there's a good example of this in um, Deus Ex Human Revolutions, where one of the possible endings... Um, spoilers, by the way, for Deus Ex Human Revolution. Um, is... Okay, so at the end of Deus Ex Human Revolution, um, you're on this uh, sort of floating... Um, I guess it's kind of like a raft thing, but it's like a giant um, continent-sized raft. And um, basically, uh, you have you have a few choices. You can choose um, who to throw under the bus, uh, or you can choose to sink the whole damn thing with um, the people who want you to choose to throw the other person under the bus. Um and uh, let humanity decide, you know, what how to move forward on their own. Um, personally, that's not the ending that I prefer. There's another ending where you just um, release the full unedited truth um, about what's going down, and that I think is um, is better as an ending. But um, you know, it's it, it's. Like, you know, that's not, like, his recognition is in his goal there. You know, the the main characters of the story. So, uh, yeah, in that example and in general, I don't really have a problem with um, the hero not getting recognition for his work. Why is there a three ceiling fan in your room? Actually, the room that I recorded the announcement video in is not my room it's actually a home office and as you can see in this photo here of the ceiling um, there's only two fans in this room and there's only one fan in my room as you'll see in a moment okay quick room tour um, here's my bed as you can see there is only one ceiling fan that's a fire hazard um, yeah yeah only one ceiling fan in here um, God, there's an echo in here. I really hope it isn't picking up too bad on the recording. Um, but yeah, here we see my shelf with some stuff. Um, yeah, this is my, uh, King Ranger helmet. I actually, um, or when I ordered this, my plan was to record the Q&A announcement wearing that. But, um, as it turns out, it's a little, it's a little tight on my head when I had less hair and now I have more hair so honestly not gonna happen um, here's my change shelf because I fucking hate carrying the spare change so every time I, ha I come home with spare change in my pocket I put it here I sort it out I really gotta get a um, uh, a coin wrapping uh, machine you know and um, so I can take these to the bank cash them in um, receipt from uh, discount tire um, if you if depending on what on what comes out first this or I think it's Lokaka cast 7 um, you might have already heard that story um, here's a shit happens poster that I got for Christmas um, and still haven't put up on my wall uh, that's gonna go that's gonna go over there uh, right next to my Twilight Princess poster let's get a better look at all my posters uh so we got legend of zelda twilight princess we got a magic the gathering poster over there that's the box from um one of those uh chocolate frogs um that uh that you see sometimes uh spider-man poster got to walk around the bed get a better look at these uh my danger days poster it's not my favorite album from My Chemical Romance, but it's um, that that's but it, it but it is my favorite band. So, you know, we got a Mad Max Fury Road poster over here. We got a Spider-Man Three poster. That wasn't a good movie. Um, we got the Wooly and Matt Skull Girls poster over here. We got the uh, Matt and Pat Shitstorm of Scariness or Shitstorm of Spookiness. I forget what it's called. Uh, poster over here. We got this. Um, this is something that a um, that a friend of mine back in high school um, drew for me, actually. And um, 
The uh, crumpled up edges here are from where my sister tried to jam it in a um, picture frame that was too small for it. Um, she was like six at the time, probably, so I've forgiven her. Uh, here's my signed original Hulk poster, actually signed by Lou Ferrigno, as you can see there. Um, my Dark Souls 3 poster. Um, another Super Best Friends poster, I think this is Mecha Week. Um, this used to be signed by Dino Andrade, um, the voice of the Scarecrow in Batman Arkham Asylum. I got this um, at the first Comic-Con I went to. Um, but as you can see, um, yeah, it's not doing so well. Probably because there's no fucking blinds on my windows. You know? The sunlight just comes in and hits it and just destroys everything. Um, here we have a guitar stand that is currently being used as a belt holder for my spare belt. Um, oh, by the way, here's the fucking blinds that I need to install. Um, don't know how long those have been sitting there. Uh, we got my closet here. And I know you might be asking, well, if you have a guitar stand, where's the guitars? Well, here's where the guitars live. Uh, we got an electric here that I haven't played in like four years, maybe. And an acoustic back here that I haven't played in even longer. Um, so that's where a bunch of random junk lives. Um, here we got the scratching post slash uh, elevated platform for the cat that he never fucking uses. Um, so that's a thing. Um, by the way, by the way, cool thing about this bed is even though, oh, by the way, yeah, step stool. I got to use a step stool to get into bed because it's so fucking tall. It used to be even taller because there was a, um, a box spring that I just don't use because I made it too tall. Um, but anyway, we got clothing storage space here. So this is where my shirts live. Yeah, shirts. Uh, my pants go in there. Uh, socks and underwear on the other side. So um, that's my room. Um, I'm probably going to put that poster up. Um, oh, yeah, this bag over here. This is a bag of other shit that I got last Christmas. Um, but yeah, that's my room. As you can see, only one ceiling fan. Um, so get wrecked. Hey, yo. You, you, you. Merc San, do you listen to K pop or K hip hop? If you do, then what are your top five songs or artists? I mean, that's a pretty easy one. I only listen to Psy, so number five, Hangover. Number four, Gentleman. Number three, Gangnam Style. Number two, Daddy. Number one, Nepal Baji. Next question. Yo, congrats on 300 subs, Merc. My question, what are your top five favorite anime of all time? They don't have to be in order, just five of your faves. Keep up the sick mixes, man. Cheers. My top five favorite animes. That's that's a tough one, because I like a lot of animes. Um, let's see. Kill la Kill was the first anime I ever watched to completion and pretty much set the tone for what a good action anime is to me um, going forward from there. So I'd say Kill la Kill should be on the list. Uh, Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba um, has amazing animation, great characters, um, and uh, Nezuko is adorable, so that can probably go on there. Uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, definitely. Um, any season, but I think Golden Wind probably takes it for the best. Um, it's the first season that I think is definitively better than the manga. Um, Nichijo, uh should get a spot it uh it's it's the best comedy anime ever um and uh, that's all that's all i have to say about that um but for the last one uh i think dusk maiden of amnesia um deserves mention here um if you've never seen dusk maiden of, of amnesia um basically the premise is this takane shijo from idol master voices a ghost girl in a pseudo horror rom-com you know, there's, there's more to it, but like, you know, that's, that's, that should sell you on the show. And if it doesn't, you know, it's, it's whatever. It's, it's a good show.
Watch the show. Watch Dusk Mage of, Am of Amnesia. What would you say your biggest accomplishment online is? Also, has there ever been a mashup that you've always wanted to mix but never could? My biggest online accomplishment, um, MuseCore, definitely. Bringing 45 artists together to create a mashup album comprising 202 tracks was probably the single most notable thing I've done in my entire six year mashup career. Now, most of those tracks were admittedly ass, um, and quality control definitely helped the smaller, less popular sequel, but it just didn't make the same impact as the original. Um, as for your second question, uh, has there ever been a mashup you've always wanted to mix but never could? A few. Uh, more recently, I've been able to mix pretty much whatever uh, was technically possible um, by making my own instrumentals through Melody.ml. But the earlier mashup ideas from before I had access to Melody are gone now. I've forgotten them, so I couldn't, uh, I couldn't give you any specific examples. One, how did Natashiko become a ghost? This isn't something that I've um, really thought too much about. Um, you know, I just wanted to make a cute ghost girl OC, and that was pretty much the end of my thoughts on it. So, um, you know, I guess, like, obviously, to become a ghost, you'd have to die, right? Um, so, I don't know. When did she die? I don't know. Um, how old was she when she died? 18, at least. Um, you know, um, I'm thinking probably an earthbound spirit, um, would be the type of ghost she is. So she'd be, like, bound to, like, a specific location. Um, probably, like, uh, just living in an apartment complex, living in air quotes, of course. Um... With, like, uh, no interest, really, in moving on to the next life, probably. I don't know, though. I don't know. Two, where are the drawings, Merc? I really, I really do have to, um, get back to drawing at some point. Um, I've been really bad about that. Um, I remember I was going to, um, do a, uh, a six fan arts thing, back when that was actually a thing, and now I don't think it's a thing anymore. Um, but uh, currently, where are the drawings? Um, I post new drawings as soon as they're complete on my Twitter. Uh, the link for that is in the description, although if you go there now, you'll have to scroll down pretty far to find my last drawing, because I don't even remember when the last time I drew was. Um, I haven't drawn recently because I haven't felt motivated to do so, or I've been too busy with anime and video games. So, sorry about that. Um, I'll try to draw more in the future. Three, just because it's been three years doesn't mean it's your Q&A again. Ask me a question. For you specifically, my question is, um, what is the end plan for the characters that you've been creating? Uh, Moga, Haley, Carrie, etc. Do you have a cohesive narrative in your head that you're writing down? And do you plan to publish it in any, for, in any format, like a, a comic or an illustrated story or whatever? Um, that's my question for you. But I also have a, a, I also have a question for um, a general question for my audience. Um, I'm planning on doing another Let's Play, uh, this time of Batman Arkham Knight. Which of the following would you prefer? Um, would you prefer that I do it as a solo LP with occasional guests? Um, or an entire LP where I go through the game with one consistent co-commentator, or would you prefer something uh, in between? Um, you know, with with the first two, uh, there's um, the the strength of the of the first one is that I can put out um, if I do a solo LP, I can put out parts more frequently because I don't have to rely on anyone else's schedule to record. Um, but it also has the drawback of, I am not funny. You know? I am not interesting to listen to um, on my own. Um, I work better when I can play off somebody, as people who have um, listened to the Lokaka cast ha can um, attest. Um, but with the, uh, the co-commentator one, 
the drawback is, of course, um, somebody has to have like uh, I have to I have to depend on somebody else's schedule. Um, so let me know in the comments what you think I should do for that. Um, that's for anybody, not just for um, not just for MIP. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know. Well, that's it for my Q&A. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, thank you again for um, 300 subscribers. And uh, I'll see you again for the next milestone, be it 400 or 350 or 420. Um, I'll see you then. All right, later.